One year and four months ago, I decided to build my first 3D printed aircraft, the Yak-15. Here's a quick recap of what's happened so far. The Mark 1. My first ever 3D printed RC plane. Center of gravity was wrong. Thrust line below CG precluded hand launching without down thrust. The Mark 2. Unpowered. Updated CAD model. Experimented with lightweight PLA printing and structural requirements. Used to test glide performance. The Mark 3. 3D printed landing gear added. Improved aesthetics. Thrust 2.4 kilograms. Weight 3.5 kilograms. Not flyable. Also, CG was wrong anyways. First landing gear failure. The Mark 4. Fully redesigned aircraft. New 3D printed retract mechanisms. Lighter tail gear. Flaps designed but not installed. Second landing gear failure. CG was wrong again. Encountered roll to the right when full powering trim standstill. The Mark 4.1. Flaps removed. Tail retract removed. CG moved forward. Weight reduced. Now 2.7 kilograms. Made sure to gradually increase thrust. Takeoff. But crash due to pilot incompetence. The Mark 4.2. Modified landing gear for ease of installation. Modified wing attachment. CG stayed the same. More powerful motor. New pilot. Flight at last. Aircraft performed well. Third landing gear failure. I made a few other videos on this aircraft, going into more detail if you're interested, but now we're caught up on the Mark 5. I'd like to thank Jechim77, if that's how you pronounce it, for recommending that I check my transmitter to see if I could slow down the servo action for the flaps. I wouldn't have known to check if it wasn't for this comment, so thank you very much. Riding off the high of the Mark 4.2 test flight, I wanted to see if I could make the aircraft feature complete by reinstalling flaps and the tail retract. I knew that this would increase the weight of the aircraft, but with the addition of the new EDF, I expected that the aircraft would have enough power to lift the added weight. I also redesigned the wing attachment. The Mark IV design had the outer wing detachable just before the ailerons, but I wanted to have the wings come off in one piece this time. I thought it might improve transportation and storage, and possibly even set up at the field. The reality was that this increased the weight of the aircraft even more with little or no benefit whatsoever. I actually found that it took longer to set up the Mark V on the field than any of the other aircraft so far, but it isn't fair to say that this is entirely the responsibility of the redesigned wing. My point is that it did not attain its goals. What it did do was increase the overall weight of the aircraft due to the additional mounting frames and there being more filament here in general than on the Mark IV design. Compounding this was my new choice of materials. Principally, lightweight PLA HD, chosen for its heat tolerance, is heavier than lightweight PLA. I redesigned the Yak-15 once again. That is most of the aircraft. I kept the jet pod basically the same as the Mark IV, but I went over everything else. As the projects progressed, my CAD skills have improved, and I wanted to apply them to make this aircraft as close as I can get it to the museum example. I completely redid the wing with a thinner airfoil and washout on the outer wings. I went over the whole aircraft, adding as many scale details as I could see from the images. Rivets, panel lines, antennas, and even a vacuum formed canopy. I also reduced the thickness of the vertical stabilizer. I would say that aesthetically, this is as far as I'm willing to go with the Yak-15, as I feel that I've firmly crossed into the realm of diminishing returns in relation to the aesthetics. I always wanted to design an aircraft with completely hidden linkages, and with the Mark V I got that much closer. Here you can see the difference between the Mark IV and V setup for the ailerons. I also tried to leave room for error in making the rudder and elevator assembly removable. This was also my first time using heat set inserts. I used to use self-tapping screws on the Mark IV hatches, which admittedly worked great, but I thought that they would wear down over time, so I decided to switch over. It all feels like a little bit too much work for an aircraft that lasts one or two test flights, but there's that instinct to do it right the first time that I'm struggling with. One more thing before the test flight. I was able to resolve one of the key issues with my 3D printed landing gear design. That is, the rough interface surface between the upper and the lower leg as it compresses to provide shock absorption. This is a natural consequence of 3D printing, but I was able to resolve it by using PTFE tubing to line the interior of the shock. 
This completely eliminated the sound and it feels so much smoother. I'm pretty psyched with these results. And I would say that of all the design work in this project, these landing gear, and particularly this new iteration, are the thing I'm most proud of. These landing gear have taken a while to get to this point, and I've learned so much about mechanisms trying to build them. The reality, however, is that they're just too heavy. Collectively, the tail and the main landing gear come in at about 500 grams. That is, including the mounting base and the wing, the mounting frame and the tail, the doors, and the arms. This kind of weight is just too much for an aircraft this small. It all seems a little bit silly when I put it like that. But the reason why I decided to do it like this in the first place was because at the time I couldn't find electric retracts with an appropriate extension angle and an appropriate form factor to fit the scale I was working at. And I hadn't quite learned the consequences of an overweight aircraft thoroughly enough. This was the culmination of three months of design work. I guess it goes without saying that these results were sobering after the success of the Mark 4.2. I lost sight of the fundamentals in pursuit of the right look. Maybe it's an appropriate moment to point out that before I designed airplanes, I was an artist. I'm aware of some amount of the theory, but I'm still getting my practical experience in relation to the constraints of this hobby. To get the weight down, I knew I wouldn't be able to run the tail retract on this model. The retractable, steerable tail assembly weighs around 112 grams. Putting that much weight in the rear of the fuselage meant adding compensatory weight to the nose. And since the distance from the CG to the tail is greater than that of the CG to the nose, the necessary weight isn't one to one. For the 113 grams in the tail, I needed a 300 gram nose cone to get the CG in the right place. I considered using a larger battery to serve a similar purpose, but to accommodate that, I will need to redesign the interior of the forward fuselage. I also tried cutting filament out of the rear and mid fuselage. I managed to cut out 31 grams without severely impacting the structural integrity. And this did reduce the necessary nose weight some amount. I really want to salvage as much as I can from this prototype. Right now I'm thinking I might be able to convert it into a hand launchable aircraft if I install a thrust diverter at the end of the jet pod. That'll allow me to examine the flight characteristics of the Mark V and determine whether it's an aerodynamic improvement. You can see the difference between the Mark IV and V internal structure. I must emphasize that the Mark IV didn't need reinforcement. In fact, it had proven itself relatively resilient in the failed takeoff and belly landing. The tail section was a bit weak in this area, but a simple rearrangement of carbon rods would have resolved that problem. I clearly got carried away with the Mark V redesign, and to rectify this, I'll need to go back to what works. If it ain't broken. I also need to think about the landing gear problem. I'm considering using a wire bending tool and some 4mm steel rods in combination with a 75 degree retract. I'm pretty confident that this will be a lot lighter than this current setup. The 3D printed landing gear design work is not entirely lost, but maybe it's a little too heavy for an aircraft at this scale. I'm really going to try and make best use of the Mark V airframe. It's still overweight after all the weight reduction I've done, but I might be able to get it into the air even with the new designed landing gear and i really want to do that because i want to test their strength i've got some ideas as to how to improve them if they do fail which i'm expecting at this point but i'm cautiously optimistic and if push comes to shove i'll remove them and hand launch the aircraft and get at least flight data out of that so all isn't lost in that regard I'd originally planned to use the fan in front configuration for the Mark V, but I ultimately moved away from that because in my experimentation I found that the thrust tube I designed actually reduced the thrust, the static thrust that is. And I also found that I couldn't place the ESC in a way that would allow it to be in the airstream without affecting the thrust because if the fan is in front and there aren't any available ducts without, you know, a non-scale feature, then Basically, I had to have some sort of duct, some sort of uh, cheetah hole or vent. So ultimately, there was really no point. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for now. Um, I'm starting to experience what I can only describe as yak fatigue. So <laughs> I'm hoping that, you know, this next one will give me the space to take a break from yak 15s for a little while. Um, 
I'll hopefully be working on the dedicated 3D printed landing gear video because there's some things that I'd like to say about that. But until then, thank you for watching.